four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. Welcome to my channel, Jay Cutler TV. And make sure to stay in tune with the newest and updated videos. Subscribe below, guys. Thank you so much for following along. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Be Built by Bros Alive from the Mecca. Uh, today we're going to show you just a few different movements where you can angle your torso, your arms, or your wrists uh, in slightly different positions to basically affect uh, the muscle that you're working slightly different than the basic form of the movement. So we're going to do something for the biceps, the hamstrings, the shoulders, and the traps. Uh, and hopefully you can come away with some interesting ways to hit the muscle and ignite some new growth. Okay, so we're starting here on a seated curl machine. Sort of like a preacher. Every gym usually has some type of a variation of this machine. And what I have Dave doing is actually, as you can see, instead of sitting straight into the machine like you normally would, I have his torso angled straight to the side so that his arm is abducted from his body. And by putting his arm in this position, what he's basically doing is affecting the inner bicep fibers a little bit more strongly than the outer fibers. Of course, he's not isolating, we're just targeting. So by having his arm in this position, he's working those inner fibers of a double-headed muscle here so he can have a little more thickness in this area. He's using a full range of motion He's not going too heavy because with the arm in this position, there's a lot of pressure on the shoulder, so we don't want to go too heavy, and we want to make sure that he can get a full stretch and a full contraction. So give this one a try if you have a machine like this in your gym. Great for the biceps. Okay, so what we're showing you next here is a movement for the traps. Obviously, when people do dumbbell shrugs normally, they just stand straight up, and they shrug straight up, and that's a, a good movement for working the top of the traps. But by angling the torso forward at about 45 degrees on the incline bench and just retracting the shoulder blades or adjusting from working the top of the trap into more of the mid-back, the mid-trap area to develop that 3D effect right there in the mid-back. So by doing regular shrugs, you're not really working the complete trap com from top to bottom. You're working the top of the trap which will give you the height. But by angling forward like this, you get that depth in the middle of the back, which is very important, especially if you're a competitor in the back double bicep shot. So give these a try next time you're working your traps and back. Okay, as you can see, Dave is doing a regular side lateral, which of course is normal for working the side of the delts, the lateral delts. But what I'm gonna have him do to switch this movement up, he's gonna lean the torso forward just a little bit and as you can see he's changed the position of his wrist so his palms are facing backward now by switching his torso into this position and turning the wrists and hands into this position we're making this a side lateral movement into more of a rear delt and upper trap movement so he's working this area right here in the rear delt and right here in the trap as you can see, it's a very short range of motion. It's almost like a pinching effect. And you want to keep it nice and strict and make sure that you're lifting with the rear shoulders and the trapezius. It's a great movement for completing development all throughout the deltoids, from front to back. Okay, so the last movement we're going to show you today is for the hamstrings on a basic lying leg curl machine. As you can see, he's doing it in a normal position where his torso is down and he's just doing a regular leg curl. What I'm gonna have him do is actually push his torso, raise it up almost into like a push-up position. And by raising his torso up into this position, he's actually getting a stronger contraction at the top of the movement than he would with regular leg curls. This is actually working the fibers a little bit higher up in the hamstring, up towards the glutes and taking away a little bit of the effect down by the knee. So a great thing to do is actually to do a superset 
like this, where he starts off in this position here, gets as many reps as he can, and then you finish off by laying back down in the regular position. And this way, you actually will get the entire hamstring from top by the glutes to down by the back of the knee. A great way to finish off or start off a hamstring workout. Give this a shot. Hi, right, Merlin. We're inside today because it's raining, believe it or not. And we don't want to show the rain on, on the camera. <laughs> It's still in the 60s though, at least know, it's not I snowing in the, We're in the, so spoiled. Yeah, we are spoiled. Yeah. So for this, this is crappy weather for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're inside. Do you have any good questions this week? Yeah, I got it. Uh, he, uh, one of my uh, followers on Facebook uh, asked me kind of a two-part question. Uh, he wanted to know about uh, some of the different foot positions on leg presses. He wanted me to go over that again. So I'm just going to go over that really quickly, even though we had it on the show a couple weeks ago. So basically, we were showing that on the leg press that um, if you put your feet up uh, higher on the platform, uh, you're going to engage a little bit more of the hamstring and glutes uh, as opposed to lower on the platform. If you bring your feet down very low, that actually eliminates some of the hamstring and glutes and brings more direct quadriceps into play. Uh, the closer the stance that you go, you'll work a little bit more on the vastus lateralis on the outside of the thigh. And the wider you go, the more you'll work the vastus medialis with the teardrop on the inside of the thigh. And that brings me to the second part of the question where you want to know what, what are some really good exercises to affect that vastus medialis muscle. Uh, so of course, yes, leg pressing uh, and squatting uh, with a wider stance, especially with the toes pointed slightly out, uh, will affect the vastus medialis a little bit more strongly affect those fibers. Again, I, I always want to emphasize that you can't isolate any part of a muscle. You're still, of course, working the entire thigh, uh, but you can engage uh, different sets of motor unit pools or muscle fibers by switching your position. So that wide stance will do that. There's another kind of squat called a plie squat, uh, where you actually will put your legs out very wide, point the toes outward uh, very wide. You can hold the dumbbell. You could do it on a, a Smith machine, uh, almost like in a front squat position. Uh, and this again will engage at vastus medialis. Uh, and the last one I'll mention to you will be a leg extension, which we have shown before, that if you uh, come to the top of a leg extension, instead of pointing the toes straight, you move the feet, legs and feet outward like that, you will engage the vastus medialis very strongly. So. I don't want you to think that by hitting this muscle, you know, all of a sudden you're going to explode with growth. A lot of this has to do with genetics. Some people have just, uh, you know, a lot of thigh sweep versus having that vastus medialis. Some are very, have a very heavy teardrop and not a lot of sweep. Some people have everything, the lucky ones. Uh, but again, by changing these angles and by changing these foot positions and everything that we like to show on the show, you can at least reach your genetic potential for that area. So give these a shot and you should see some more growth in the vastus medialis. Okay. Thanks, Martin.